Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to talk about the removal of Swagger in .NET 9 and how you should prepare and get ready to adapt that change when it comes out in about a month. So as you may or may not know, Swagger has been sort of a built-in tool in .NET for a very, very long time. And it's this nice web UI that allows us, usually in development, but some people put it in production, to visualize the API and see what endpoints we have, how can we interact with them, call them as well as have authentication schemes and stuff like that. So a way to document the API, but also interact with it. Now in .NET 9, all that, but the small aspect of it is going away. So let me show you what I mean. I have .NET 9 installed. I have sort of the, the gold release version of .NET 9. So exactly how it's going to be in a month. And if I go and create a new project, I'm going to say demo API. Uh, and I choose Web API. If I create that, all that is in .NET 9. As you're going to see in the program.cs, I no longer have all that swagger stuff. In fact, if I go and I see the NuGet packages, I only have the Microsoft.ASP.NET Core API, which is ultimately what's replacing the swagger stuff. So you no longer have this endpoint discovery explorer stuff. All you have is the builder.service.add open API. And on the HTTP request pipeline front, the two add swagger and add swagger UI calls have been replaced with app.map open API. So this is ultimately Microsoft's response to the swagger open API JSON document. So if I go and just run this API, let me show you what I have. My API is running. And if I go, let's say in my browser and I search for my URL and then open API forward slash v1.json, that is the default uh, path, which is being registered when we call app.map open API, which exposes the documentation for said API. So the Swagger stuff have been replaced with the built-in functionality through the open API package but there is no UI. You still have many tools to expand this with responses and schemas and components and stuff like that. And as you can see, we have the model, the type, the properties, date, temp temperature, see, you have everything describing the API as it is, which by default, it's a weather API or the weather forecast API, but no UI. So what do we do now? You could go ahead and just do the obvious. You can go to NuGet and you can search for swashbuckle.asp.net core and add this NuGet package back in, effectively restoring that UI functionality. And all you need to do to restore that is you have to say app.useSwagger UI. You don't need to do use Swagger. You can still rely on the built-in map open API call that's being added in .NET 9. But if you want to map Swagger to point at that, what you do have to say is options.swagger endpoint, and you want to point to that new JSON file to load all the documentation. That is open API v1.json, and I'm going to call it demo API. But once you do that, and that's the only call I'm going to add, and now I run the API, I can go back here, and if I say swagger, then I have my weather forecast and everything works. I can call the API, I can execute this endpoint, get the response, and all that works fine. So you could do the obvious thing and just re-add Swagger support. And yeah, you can click on that JSON and you can keep modifying your code and add customization to the open API functionality because you do actually have options here too. And you can come here and say document name should include open API version, add schemas, add transformers. There's many features you can use with the open API stuff adding .NET 9. And I will be making an in-depth video explaining all that. But what you can also do is you can just plug in any UI that you want. And if you want to bring back the Swagger UI, well, that's simple as that. But this video is not about that because that is kind of boring. I quite honestly never liked the Swagger UI. I found it a bit outdated, old looking, and there's many, many options on what you can replace it with. One of them that has incredible ASP.NET Core support is called Scalar. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you Scalar. I'm going to just remove the swashbuckle stuff. No swagger, no nothing. Just go ahead and just delete this. And I'm going to go and add Scalar.ASP.NET Core. I'm going to install this new package. And then I'm going to go to the exact same location and I'm going to say app.mapScalarAPI reference. And I could leave it there. And if I just leave it there and I say run, 
then watch what happens. And I love this plug and play functionality in ASP.NET Core. It's always been one of my favorite things about the two links sharing the same name, you know, map something, map something, and then add something. But my ABI is running, and I can now go here, and instead of Swagger, I say Scalar V1. And now I have a very nice dark mode, and by the way, you're going to get blind now, light mode approach to this uh, documentation if I want to. Not only that, but I have some other goodies which we'll be expanding in a second. But now I have my endpoints here, and I can see my weather forecast endpoint, I can see the response, I can say show child attributes, and I can see all the items. I can see that this is an application JSON. I can send a test request, and if I do that, as you can see, the request is sent, and I can get the response down here. Uh, this is a bit zoomed in. That's why you see things so big. Usually, it wouldn't look like this, but I want you to be able to see it. Uh, you can see your model. So if you just click here, you're going to see your models down here. And then you have search functionality. So if you want to navigate to um, sort of a folder for a specific schema or with the forecast or different endpoints, you can do that. And it's very, very nice. But it can get nicer. And I'm going to show you how we can customize it now. If I just stop this, I can use either the scalar options as a sort of effluent method chaining approach or using an object initializer. I'm just going to show you the, the chain method approach. So I'm going to say with title over here, demo API, because why not? Then I'm going to say with theme. And we have quite a few themes to choose from the default that we just saw to alternate to a bunch of different ones. I'm going to just choose Mars over here. And then I can say with HTTP default client, I can choose the scalar target. In this case, because we're writing C sharp, I'm going to say C sharp. And the client we're going to show a demo of is the HTTP client of .NET. And I can do more things. I can say with preferred scheme, and this points to authentication scheme. So I can say API key, for example, or I can say with API key authentication, and I can specify options. So I could say key options dot token equals API key, and so on. I'm not going to do that here, but I could if I wanted to. It's support, and you have other things like custom CSS or CDN URL, or my favorite with dark mode, which is, thank God, the default. So Scalar by default has dark mode. So let me just run this and show you. By the way, as this is loading, I will remind you that Dome Train now has a seven day trial. So if you want to try 10 of our courses completely for free, check the link in the description. You don't have to pay anything. Give it a go. If it's not for you, then that's totally fine. So now this is running. And if I go ahead and I refresh with all the changes we added, now we have a nice Marsy, I guess, theme. And maybe you think not much has changed. But now if I go over here, you see that this defaults and if I refresh it, you'll see it again. This defaults to the uh, HTTP client of C Sharp. And why is that important? It's important because now we also get code which shows us how we can run an API request from C Sharp to call that API. So if I just take this and let's say I had a client, I could go ahead and say, yeah, go on, then just, just call this API. And if I just added this, this code compiles and it would work. Not only that, but I can also say, how about Java's OK HTTP? How about C Sharp? But let's go with, I did see a few options. Let's go with REST Sharp, which is an alternative. Uh, it's a new Git package, which you can use, which makes work with REST APIs uh, very, very easy. Uh, you totally can. And then you see a nice default response and the models as well over here. And everything was incredibly easy to install, in my opinion. If you're starting Evergreen with .NET 9 projects and this is something you can't support, I would definitely take a look into this. It's an open source project, very well styled on GitHub. Maybe give it a star as well if you want. And that's what I will be using moving forward because I think it's very aesthetically pleasing. You can add variation, you can customize it in many ways. Authentication is very, very simple. And if you want a more in-depth video on open API and maybe how it can be worked with this, Leave a comment down below, let me know. Well, that's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, keep coding.